Hey everybody, it's Mike from Motorflows, and welcome to today's video. It's uh, Tuesday, October eleventh, twenty twenty-two, and you know it's been uh, it's been over a week since I released a video. I, I've been really busy. We've just released our new Orderflows Trader Six uh, software upgrade, and you know it's a big uh, difference in the order flow. You know we got nineteen uh, indicators, order flow based indicators inside there, as well as um, you know some improvements on uh, ways to analyze the delta and um, basically understand what's happening in the market, right? Because, you know, software is there to help you do your analysis. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is imbalances. Now, I have a very pared down version here of the footprint, which is just basically the, your normal bid-ask footprint chart that, you know, most people um, that, you know, are new to order flow, right? They get a free version of um, a footprint chart. You know, Ninja Trader has their volumetric Um you know, and, and there's there's versions out there that are, are relatively inexpensive. And um, I'm showing you this tip on using order flow imbalances because, you know, if, if you're new to order flow, you know, you want to know what to look for. And, and that's why I do these videos. Now, you know, today we had, you know, pretty much every uh, futures market sold off about 145 um, in the afternoon. This is uh, the 10 year notes. But, you know, for example, like gold, right, 145 is, is when the big drop happened, you know, crude oil. Uh, similar thing. Uh, obviously, equities had that big uh, drop at uh, roughly around the same time. And, you know, the thing with imbalances is an imbalance is, is okay, first let's define it, right? What is an imbalance? Well, you know, markets trade in a two way auction there's a bid and there's an offer. So when you have more volume traded on either the bid or the offer, you know, the bid versus the offer, not horizontally, but in a two way auction. You know, say it's five bit at six. If you have, um, you know, the, the sort of the industry standard, if you will, is uh, four to one. But again, you don't have to use four to one. You could use three to one. You could use five to one. You could use six to one. Um, you know, it, it's really up to you. Uh, but on this chart, I'm using, you know, four to one, which is, you know, fine for, for most, most people. Yeah, I think you, you'd probably want to change it, um, you know, if you're really digging deeper into order flow and you know developing a trading plan around imbalances maybe you want to refine it uh, based on the market that you're looking at but again you know for most traders four to one is enough to determine that there's an imbalance in the market and all right so where are we this is gold here so it's a one minute chart okay so the market started selling off right and you see red bar red bar red bar red bar um red bar but what are you seeing right selling imbalances right that's what you expect to see on a market selling off, right? That's normal, right? Because you have aggressive sellers in the market, right? People hitting the bid more than lifting the offer uh, by, you know, a percentage of four to one more hitting the bid than lifting the offer. That is a selling imbalance. Now, all of a sudden, market's still going down, but you're seeing buying imbalances, right? Right in here, 15, you know, 23, 20, 41, 24, 16. These are red candles. And it's like, what are you telling me? You just told me that, you know, when a market is selling off, I should be looking for selling imbalances. Yeah, one, that's the most obvious sign. That, that's where you start to look for it. Um, the imbalance is coming in. But again, you know, I've talked about this. What you want to see is you want to see the volume coming down on the offer side as well. And what I mean by volume coming down is you want to see lower and lower offers as well as, as opposed to just people hitting the bids. I mean, people hitting the bids is going to push the market down, but what's going to keep it down to stop it from going back up is solid offers, solid volumes on the offer. And often what you see on markets uh, moving down is selling imbalances in those, I'm sorry, buying imbalances on those red bars because what's happening is, you know, market just dropped here. So like, for example, right, this is gold. You know, we were just trading 16, uh, 85 and a half. Next thing you know, we're trading 16, you know, 81, but, you know, we just dropped, you know, four bucks, you know, in, in a few minutes, it's going to attract buyers, right? People always looking to buy something on the cheap, you know, whether it's, you know, a futures contract or, or whether it's, you know, your groceries, right? Especially, you know, we're always trying to buy things at a lower price. So it's not uncommon to see, you know, the, the selling of balances quickly on the way down. Then when you sort of hit a, a you know, an area after kind of a, a rotation, right? Four or five dollars in gold is about a rotation to see some buying come in and you're seeing it 
But more importantly, what you're seeing is still you're seeing supply coming into the market. That's what's causing these imbalances because now people that were shorting it up here, you know, maybe they're starting to cover some down here, right? That they're starting to cover it. Or, you know, people that said, hey, you know, we just had this quick sell off and, you know, this is a good buying opportunity. We just broke for four or five dollars. Um, you know, uh, I think we're going to rotate back up to, you know, 85, 86. So they're starting to buy it in here, right? But that buying is being absorbed by passive sellers. That's what's causing these imbalances, right? Because you still see this market dropping, right? You see red bar with positive delta, red bar with positive delta, right? Which is not what you expect to see. You know, this is a uh, bar delta divergence, right? Because normally you would expect to see, you know, a red candle with negative delta, right? And a green candle with positive delta. But um, in this case, what you're seeing is, is kind of the opposite. You're seeing these red candles with positive delta because people are absorbing. Traders are absorbing whatever buying is going on in here because the sellers, you know, this is like the clearest sign to you that the big money, the smart money, so to speak, is thinking this market's going lower, right? The whole thing about order flow is following the big money, following the smart money. I, don't, I mean, is big money smart? You know, generally we would think so i mean there's a reason why they got big money so they're supposed to be smart right but it's not always the case you know i've seen very big traders make make uh, bad trades but anyway that's that's another uh, video but as we're going down you're you're looking for signs of potentially this keep going it's one thing to just hit the bids that's what you expect to see but when you see big you know decent offers coming in to absorb whatever selling or sorry whatever buying is coming in after the selling that's what you want to see. Now, treasury notes, 10-year notes, okay, similar thing, right? 145, rug got pulled, right? Everyone is is just, uh, you know, risk off, get me out of this market in every market, it seemed. And you can see, right, we're starting to come down, right? Starting to tick lower. Now, treasuries trade a lot of contracts. And as we're going down, selling a balance, selling a balance, buying a balance, selling a balance, selling a balance, selling a balance, buying a balance. Now, granted, you know, 746, it's not 2,000, you know, but it, it's still that imbalance three against 746. This is a five-minute 10-year um, note futures chart, okay? So, you know, you're seeing you're, you're trading, you know, what, 13 at uh, 145 in the afternoon. It's trading 6,894 contracts, got a negative delta of 1892. But you got this buying imbalance of 1265. So what was happening is market's starting to break lower, right? Aggressive sellers are coming in, hitting these bids aggressively, right? You don't see much volume here. 190, 395, 651, 1265. So as these people, as these traders are clearing out these bids here, 1183, 1822, 1300, you got a big offer coming in here, helping to keep pressure on this market to keep it going down. Okay, then the next bar, more selling coming in, 1677 imbalance, 1254 imbalance, 2384 imbalance, okay? Look on the offer side, right? You, you don't see much at the top, but then you see 2000 here to help keep it down, another 2000 here to help keep it down, right? Market breaks further. Look at this bar here, right? You don't see many much imbalances in here. The volume's kind of thinning out, but down here, 3,600 contracts on the offer traded, right? That's your heaviest volume in the bar. Right? As this market is coming down, you're seeing strong offers as well on the way down to keep it, you know, to keep it under pressure. Right? That that's what you expect to see on a market that's got some very strong selling taking place. And you know, it was interesting because you know everyone's obviously was you know it was felt like a long day today, but it's earlier that day. I mean, we had that nice sell off in the afternoon. I mean, it was more dramatic. It doesn't look as dramatic here in the in the 10 year notes because basically we're breaking from you know 111.16 down to 06 a 10 um 10 tick well not 10 tick um you know because trades in the halves but uh, you know 10 point move but earlier in the day we had a nice rally actually um you know also a nice you know over 10 tick move up we had this move right we came down to uh you know 111 even then we started rallying very strong aggressive buying you could see in here, right, the bar 20,000 contracts, 7,000 is, is positive delta, right? It finished positive delta of 7,700. So over 30% of the bar, actually more, you know, is aggressive buying over 
the aggressive selling. And you see buying and balance, buying and balance. You, know, you got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven buying and balances. But at the top, you got this nice big buying and balance. Or sorry, selling and balance in here. Because now you have um, you know, a big passive seller coming in here to support this market. Right? Then the next bar, again, trades 14,000 contracts. Nice. You got this big selling and balance. This buyer is absorbing whatever selling is taking place, right? Again, over here, now you got this red bar. You know, early in the bar, there was, you know, a big buyer here. Market dropped down, but then in the next bar, it came right back up. You got the buying imbalances at that same level where you had those selling imbalances earlier. Another um, buying imbalance here. But look at this bar, okay? This is interesting because it traded 12,000 um, contracts. Where's the heaviest volume? in this bar it's right here on the bid side 25 26 now this is not a imbalance but it's your heaviest volume it's 25 25 versus 1671 so you know that there's obviously a big support in this market just as and it's coming in you know one tick above the support that you had earlier just coming in uh you know three ticks above the support from earlier so I know I got, you know, at 06, there was support at 07 and a half support, 08, there's support, right? So if this market is going to break down anytime soon, I know that at eight, I got buyers at seven and a half, there were strong buyers at six, there were strong buyers. Knowing that there's strong buyers in there, which do you think is the direction of the trade? Probably to the upside. Okay, you know, I mean, you, you don't need a heat map to see this. You can just see it in a footprint. It's very easy to see, right? And, you know, this type of bar, you know, in here is you know, similar to when we started coming back down here, right? You see we're coming down. The heavy volume is on the offer side right here at 08. You know, on, on the way up at 08, the heaviest side was on the bid side, you know, in this bar. I'm talking on a bar by bar basis. So recognizing where these, you know, these big volumes come in, again, it's nice to see it when it's an imbalance because it's very easy to see because your eyes are sort of focused. Oh, you know, there, there's a, a red number or a blue number in the footprint telling you, you know, you have an imbalance, but sometimes it's not an imbalance. Sometimes it's just, you know, I don't say normal order flow because it's, it's bigger than your normal order flow, but just pay attention to that, right? Just look for, you know, when you're looking at a footprint, just, you know, glance quickly where's the biggest volume coming in is it coming in on the bid side or the offer side okay now which way is the market moving so is basically what you're asking yourself is is support coming in or resistance coming in now by resistance i don't mean you know just you come up to a level hit it and then come off that's your resistance what i'm talking about is you know the the resistance of a strong seller offering resistance to any move higher okay which is sort of different than your run-of-the-mill resistance thinking oh you know what we, we come up here we hit this high you see all this volume going through that's my resistance as you start coming off this is like in real time you're seeing the support forming or this resistance selling um coming in here on the way down okay so again you know it starts off with imbalance but it doesn't always have to be based around imbalance what you should be watching for is the volumes i mean imbalance makes it easy to see but sometimes these things are just a little bit hidden that you just got to look at it for, you know, an extra two seconds and put the pieces together to figure it out. Anyway, guys, I'll end that video here. You know, I said I really wanted to talk more about imbalances and it sort of deviated into, into a bit of volume. Um, but, you know, it, it's a natural thing, right? In, in the markets, that's how it is. I mean, everything is not cut and dry. It's not like, um, you know, you're you're in you know, art school or something and, you know, all your crayon, you know, crayons, all your markers, all your um, paint brushes are all neat and nice and new. But then when you're in the studio painting, you know, your, your brushes are all, um, you know, they got paint in them. Some are stiff, some are hard. You know, you got to make do with, you know, with what the market provides you in that sense in terms of, um, you know, market generated information. So anyway, guys, I hope you appreciate this video. Um, be sure to like and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. You know, I said in the beginning of the video, I talked about our new version of Order Flows Trader. Um, so you're probably going to start to see me working more things into um, my videos based off of 
you know what you can see on the order flows trader again you know this chart right here is a real basic just you know I, I stripped it down because I wanted to keep it simple um, but you know having software that can do a lot of things for you in terms of you know like for example you know, our just give you a sneak peek um, our order flows trader you know we've, we've got all these things buying tails buying selling tails delta divergence exhaustion prints ex imbalance reversals you know inverse volume imbalance um, you know market sweep detectors market weakness detector order flow sequencing our obviously our ratios PLC slingshot um, prominent points of control and you know so much more I mean, we've got a bunch of at least 19 and, and there's other things in here about reading the Delta as well but um, you know I'll just leave you with uh, this real I mean one of the things that I like to use in a market like Treasury notes is the um, stacked imbalances whoops you know it, it's something that actually not stacked imbalances uh, prominent point of controls I'm like I don't have my glasses on but it's something that you know when you add it to your chart it really can help you see things that you know you you've probably never noticed before in the order flow and that was the whole point of um, you know creating originally the order flows trader softwares you know I wanted something that's going to help me in my own trading and analysis of order flow and over time you know we've added more and more things um, you know ways of, of reading the order flow now this is um, prominent point of controls that we draw out until tested now you can see there's prominent point of controls you know colored uh, magenta or uh, cyan but you know one of the, the other things that we added in this version is to draw these out until tested because these are market generated support and resistance levels and you can see how this market you know we hit the support area came up to a previous resistance area right up here got one tick through it sold off as we're coming down we kick off another resistance area we sold down within a tick of that prominent point of control rallied up to within a tick of this prominent point of control sold off back down you know we hit that area again um, it's kind of holding finally we broke um, we had a bearish one here but the market rallied up uh, right through that but you know it, it's just fascinating you know here's another prominent point of control from like the day before okay we rallied literally right up to it just got past it by two ticks and then we sold off again okay so again you know I, I, I'm excited because I got a lot of things I could talk about now you know on these videos because you know honestly it, it does get uh, you know just looking at a, a normal footprint chart trying to explain things to you guys it, it's I can do it but you know, there's so many tools out there I don't understand why people don't avail of the tools available um, you know in trading you know it, it's one of those things I saw um, a meme sort of about this you know it's just like you know if you have tools available use them right don't, don't just sit here and you know this is the problem I think why a lot of traders give up on order flow is because they start looking at a footprint like this and again if they have sort of no market experience they're coming in and they don't understand a two-way auction trying to figure out is going to take time that's why you know we created the order flows trader software to make what you're looking at a lot easier to see because at the end of the day you know when you're trading in the heat of battle you got to be able to make decisions quickly and that's what um, the order flows trader software is designed to do to help you make those decisions you know quickly and efficiently all right guys anyway I'll end it there for now um, so again you know be sure to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel thanks everyone bye bye